Right, so the goal for this video is going to be to get a working prototype of this um, interactable foliage. Um, and what we want to accomplish is to have uh, this, uh, this behavior where we can run through our blueprint uh, actor um, and have it bend away from us and have the, the normal foliage here act the same way. And I kind of uh, hinted at it in the last video how we are going to accomplish this. And if you think of it as, uh, I have uh, the brush selected here. If you think about this dome, this blue dome you see here, then the, the trick is to convert all the overlapping, um, uh, what do you call, foliage instance static mesh components inside this uh, cluster of foliage uh, to a copy of this um, blueprint version. And then when we pass out of that area, we want to convert them back again. So that is what we are gonna um, do in this video. And that gonna, there's gonna be a number of uh, things we need to take a look at afterwards, but uh, I will cover that later on. Okay, um, let's see. In order to get some kind of representa representation and figure out which what is inside this area, um, first of all, let's um, if we click, let's take a look at the foliage here. If we click on this, we will see that this is actually one big uh, distributed actor. So um, that's kind of uh, important to know. If you haven't worked with the, these before, um, as I have hadn't uh, when I started this, so I'm just going to mention it anyway. Um, and also, this is going to be a proof of concept version uh, in this video, so it's not I'm not going to worry about uh, performance or anything. So you're going to see something which will definitely not perform very well, I guess. Uh, so, uh, but we'll improve on this. So, as mentioned, we want some kind of um, collision to check to see if we overlap. So I'm going to use a multi-sphere trace by channel. And we're going to trace off our um, location. And since our actor is, if we look at the viewport here, we can see our position is to make our, uh, our cage stand on the ground. It's going to be uh, 97. Um, so if we just make this trace here just like this and draw uh, uh, for one frame. Hmm, did I not call this? I need to set a radius of course. So let's set this to 300 centimeters. So as you can see now the the, uh, the dome or the, the sphere is um, centered around our hips. So in order to just get uh, get this a little bit more um, easy to work with, I'm gonna subtract our offset or minus um, 97 from this. And that was um, kind of like this. Okay. Um, so now we have, uh, you, can, you can see we have this yellow and red line at the ground and that is um, represents um, three meters I guess seems like it it's less okay anyway doesn't matter mm, seems like the diameter okay never mind uh, so this one is going to give us an array so we want to enumerate this by using the for each loop and examine what we get out of this. So if we um, um, loop through this um, and print first uh, what we get out of this, so if we break this one open, we will get a hit result, uh, which contains several informations. So if we uh, make an append here and we just uh, Turn the duration down and add another pin and say uh, the actor and the component and the um, 
the heal item. Let's get all of these out and add a space. Oops. So if we print this out now and run to the side here, where we don't overlap with anything, we'll see that we get something overlapping anyway. Right now we get the hit on the floor. Uh, we don't really worry about that right now. Um, actually we get two. That's weird. Okay. Never mind. So as we can see, we uh, when we approach this fern here, which is a, a foliage, we can see we get. Um, actually, we get two. And maybe we are overlapping with both of them. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, the thing about this is. Um, we don't really check if we are overlapping. Uh, is this, if this is a blocking hit or an initial overlap? So uh, if we make a check here and say we only interested in this if it's uh, it's a, an initial overlap. Um, so we will position ourselves on the edge of this uh, foliage here. We can see we get fern number ten. And if we stand in the middle of this, we can see we have a lot of hits. But one, as you can also also see in the beginning, I just release the mouse. We can we have the uh, the name here, the instance foliage actor instance static mesh component one. So we only have one of those. So that represents the fact that we could click one and we could get everything selected. So that's the same actor. Um, and then we have all the the. Um, Foliage instant static mesh components here, fern one, with different numbers here. So um, we'll use that information to um, get uh, get something out of this. So let's delete that again. Um, if we print out, uh, no. First of all, let's see if we can get rid of them. So um, if we drag out from the hit component think it is we can type in remove maybe it's not that one um, <laughs> hit component why is instance not here instance static mesh component Oh, of course. Um, yeah, great. We need to check if whatever we are hitting is. Uh, yeah, I actually just said it, but I kind of forgot it. So this component needs to be uh, instance first. So static mesh component. Mesh component. This one. And from this one, we can type in uh, remove instance, and it's take it's taking this instance index, and that's a hit in index. Um, it's it's a his hit item here, but it is a, an integer uh, representing the location in the array of the collection. Um, so um, if we run this now. And run through these, we can now vacuum clean our instant static meshes. So, all we need to do now is to make sure to uh, reinsert or insert the, the corresponding blueprint. And um, the blueprint we can get by uh, spawning, oops, spawn actor. Plus, and here we type in fern, uh, the fern that um, this one we created. Oops, and the spawn transform is needed. So we need uh, this is uh, the location and rotation and scale, and we need to get that from. Um, 
of this guy, the instance static mesh component. We can type in uh, get form um, get instance transform. I think. Uh, oh, there's not the one. Um, get instance transform for instance static mesh. So this one. So this one also needs the the instance index, of course, and we have the rotation here and uh, of the transform, and then connect this one up. Um, this one says uh, you can say you should always spawn. So I I'm not really sure what the default is, but um, I'm gonna select this one. So that is gonna create this. And as you can see, something weird is going on. Um, so something is not working as it should. And the thing is, um, when when we remove something, everything, if you um, imagine an array or a collection, so if you remove something from, um, from an array with 10 items and you remove something in the middle, then things will get shifted. So that instance index is not gonna be valid anymore. So, uh, in or I guess that is what is going on. Uh, I'm not really sure because something we just remove something and somebody something in the back is going crazy. Um, so anyway, if we just take this out, um, pull that one out. What? Let's see, just cut that out and do this first, and then plug that one in and uh, connect that one up here to the cast and the instance index here. Um, we should be getting something a little bit more uh, interesting. Yeah. So when we run through this, we can see something is going on and uh, It's not entirely what we want, but as you can see now, we um, we can actually run through all our foliage, and it seems like we can interact with them. Initially, we had some uh, some weird uh, movement going on, and um, yeah, that's something we will look into. But this is the kind of the basic uh, version of this. In order to um, visualize this a little bit better. I will um, turn off for the uh, for the for the blueprint I think. Um, I will oops take the blueprint where is it here and click the skeleton mesh component and say um, clear no not that one so the skeletal mesh um, and then clear this one so it doesn't have any um, texture so that means that this guy I'm just going to delete this one because we don't need that one um, so if we play now we can see uh, when we start the uh, immediately we can see a few of them has already been converted and uh, if we move a little bit around and overlap some one uh, and actually two here got converted also and as you can see once we convert them something is um, they, they're going to make a little jump and some of them are going to uh, twitch a little bit and um, but it, this is going to also visualize um, how which one we can interact with now because that's going to be all the gray ones uh, so the gray ones represent the blueprint versions. Anyway, um, in the next video I want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, what is going on with the, uh, the, the, this movement in the beginning and also talk about uh, some of the ways we can improve this and um, because yeah, right now um, we are actually converting just running around and converting everything to uh, blueprint versions and that's not going to perform eventually uh, very well.
Uh, but that's something for the next video. So until then, um, bye bye and see you in the next.